Hey, it's Louie here from Wood Unlimited. And I've got a video for you today with 10 skills that you have got to know if you are a beginner in Lightburn software. So for anybody who's here, you probably already know what Lightburn is, but it's one of the most effective and best laser softwares out there on the market. And it is for several different reasons. It's got a lot of functionality. It'll do some basic graphic design. It'll control your laser. Uh, and it's also at an amazing uh, price point. It's got a ton of flexibility in it. It will do just a, a lot of things. So if you're out there and you're looking at, uh, you're just doing this as a hobbyist or an enthusiast and you've just gotten a laser and you're trying to figure it out, uh, or if you're planning on launching this thing into a full-blown e-commerce business or you're doing all the arts and crafts fairs or you just want to make Christmas presents for your family, these 10 skills are things that you have got to know. These are just the basics that you have got to know uh, to get yourself going. So I'm going to take you today through those 10 skills and by the end of this video you will actually be able to make a simple welcome sign that you can take and uh, you know prop up on the wall. So just 10 basic skills we'll be able to turn it into a full-blown project. So stay tuned. All right so now we're over in Lightburn. I'm just going to go over the general uh, controls and some of the menu items so you have an idea of how everything works in here. If you've used Microsoft Word or any of the Microsoft applications and maybe even a Corel Draw or Adobe Illustrator, then you're going to have a leg up on a lot of people because you'll see that a lot of the elements that exist in some of those softwares have, have been compiled here. Now there's a lot of additional functionality that you don't see or different methods of accomplishing some of the same things as well as having the ability to control your laser. It's all been put into one uh, very useful package. Um, so let's get going. So if you want to start with a new sheet, let's say you had a job open, you'll start with a new sheet. You've got a button here just for new. I'm not going to save that project. It'll just give you a new blank worksheet. Other ways you can do that are file new, and the exact same thing, or control N that you can see is a shortcut. Control N would give you the same, same deal. If you want to open an existing file that you have, let's say you've been working with something, so I'm going to use this one. This is just a honeycomb and a bee. Then you can open up an existing file. That is, if you want to open a light burn file, you would use that open folder there. Now, let's just get a new sheet. If you wanted to actually take a, a type of file that is not a light burn file and import it in here, let's say you've got a JPEG or you've got a SVG or something else that you wanted, then you'd hit the import button. So then, uh, so here we've got a PNG file. So I'm just going to click on that, and you can see that this is more like a, uh, this is more of an image that we're working with here. So that's not a light burn file. So we use the import command for something like that. Uh, you've got your general undo and redo buttons that you see in most softwares. You've got your copy and paste controls. You've got this control at the top, which is just a drag function. So you can click on that and then you can drag. Uh, a, probably a more convenient way to do that is actually if you've got a scroll wheel on your mouse, you can click and hold the scroll wheel in the center and you can drag your work screen around. That's just very, very handy. Uh, so if you want to you know, use a combination of doing some zoom and uh, also dragging around, just press that scroll wheel in the middle, hold it, and then you'll be able to drag your work screen around. Uh, you've got your magnification. Uh, you can also do that with your scroll wheel. You've got like a zoom to entire page. So that just puts you on the entire page. Uh, some other basic things that you've got on the left hand side here are your pick tools. So if you wanted to select something, so I'm just going to go ahead and open a project back up right quick so I can show you. If you want to select something, you've got a pick tool. So that pick tool will allow you to select items or objects within your project. And then you've got some shape tools. So this is square or rectangle. And then you've got circle or oval. And then you've got, I think that might be a hexagon. Uh, and then a couple other things here that are just a little bit more advanced that we'll get into at some other time. Then you've got text tools, just like you would have in most software. So you can type in something, some text that you'd like to type in. Uh, some other things that are pretty handy. You know, we've got some weld tools. Those are a little more advanced um, that we'll get into at another time. And then moving over to or back up to the top bar we've got some tools like to flip things so I'm gonna go back to my pick tool I'm just gonna select wood unlimited and then you can mirror image that so we just mirror image the words so if you want to flip something or reverse it or if you want to flip it on the other axis you can flip it just like that 
Um, you've also got some centering tools. So let's say we do this and we want to center some objects. Then we could, um, let's see, let's take these two objects and select them. And now we can center them on this axis. I'm going to undo that with Control Z, or we could center them on this axis. So if you had a group of objects or items and you wanted to center them all, you could just use this, align horizontal center, or you could align them top, or you could align them bottom. And then the same thing if you wanted to center things on this axis, then you could do that and center them all together. So that's a pretty handy tool that you'll use uh, quite frequently. All right, and then over on your right hand side, what you've got is controls for your laser. So you've got a window over here, and this can be configured in different ways. Uh, this is a way that, that is convenient for me. And what this allows you to do is select different items within the workspace, and then you can change their cut settings. So for anything that I've got here that is a red object, it is set to layer two. So you can see it down here at the bottom, layer two. And these are the settings for layer two. It is in line mode, meaning it won't fill. It will just hit the outer perimeter when I send this job to the laser. And you've got a few options there. Line, fill, fill in line, offset. And then you've got your speed and your power. So you can set your speed and your power. I'm gonna double click there. Our speed is six millimeters per second and our power is set for 40. And then uh, you can set the layer to output if you would like it to be sent to the laser when you send your job or you can turn it off and then only the uh, layers that are set to output will go over to your laser uh, and then you can hide it or show it and then you also can choose whether or not your air assist for your laser is on or off when you're actually cutting or engraving that particular layer so in this file I've got all my red set to cut so it's a line with a speed of six millimeters per second and 40% of the laser's power is set with the output on. Um, the graphics are shown and when this is cutting I want air assist to be on so that switch is flipped to on. Now for the portion where we fill that's the green portion so the portions that are filled are set to fill. You can see it here in the mode fill. The speed that I need for this particular job is 316 millimeters per second at 35% of the laser's power and it's set the output on and it shows the graphics and I don't use air assist when I'm engraving um, and I'm sure there's arguments uh, for either way but I don't use air assist when I'm engraving that and so it switched to off so the air assist won't kick kick on and then the black that's just for the objects that we created up here um, earlier now if you want to change something let's say you've got presets that are saved so anytime I have something that is red I've got it saved in my presets down here, layer two, to be these settings. That's six speed, 40 power, all those things we just talked about. So if I want to select a different object, let's say I wanted to take this shape and I wanted to set it to cut, just like I've got all the other red items set to cut. I could just select this shape and click on layer two. And now that shape will also cut at the same settings as everything else here. The trace tool. This is something that really comes in very handy. So what we're going to do is we're going to import a file that's not a light burn file. So I'm going to go to import. And we're going to open up that welcome file that we saw earlier. Alright. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger where we can see it. Alright. And you can kind of see the edges are a little ragged looking. This is a small low resolution image but we can't currently do much to actually cut it. You can't set this to cut. You can cut the outer perimeter, but you can't cut the word welcome because Lightburn doesn't interpret this as multiple shapes. It just interprets it as one image. So you could engrave it, but you could not actually just cut each individual letter. So tracing will allow us to convert this into an image where then we can manipulate the individual letters and individual shapes within here so then we can adjust cut and engrave settings. So to trace, what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to go trace image. And what I found is that Lightburn has got a really, really good trace function. In fact, when I'm working over in Corel Draw sometimes, I actually take items or objects or photos and I will put them into Lightburn, trace them, and then put them back into Corel Draw to finish the work just because uh, there's a really good trace feature here. 
Sometimes when you open this up, you might not get a perfect trace that you want, depending on really the contrast between what you're tracing and the background. If, if the background is a very similar color or shade as the part that you're trying to trace, you'll struggle a bit more than you will with something like this that has high contrast between the front and the background. But there are some adjustments that you can make here. So you've got a slider bar and a lot of times you can just play with it until you get what you want. So you can see that actually traced the border, the outside border and the inside letters. For this case, I really just want it to do the word welcome. So I'm going to put it back about where it was when we came in here, which was a zero cutoff and 126, or I think it might have been 128 on the uh, threshold. So if you need to work with trace, really playing around with these two slider bars will help you get a better trace. In this case, this looks pretty good for what we want. So maybe I'll adjust a little bit, but we're pretty close. So I'm just going to hit OK. So when we hit OK, now what we've got is we've got a foreground and a background that are now two shapes. So we can take the, uh, the image file out, and now we can just work with the words. So I'm going to delete that. Alright, so from that point, if we wanted to cut out just the word welcome, then we could highlight it. We can make sure that we have the proper cut settings. So in this case, it's set to layer 2, which is what I would use to cut um, usually quarter inch birch is what I, these are the settings that I use to cut through quarter inch birch. If you were using a different material, then you, you know, of course, want to adjust the settings. But from there, the skills that we've learned with how to create shapes, how to adjust our layer settings, and we're going to make a welcome sign here just with a few skills that we've learned. All right, so we'll go back over to our shapes and we're going to draw a rectangle that's a little bit larger than the word welcome here. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to change this word welcome over to engrave instead of cut or fill instead of cut. So when I just converted that by clicking on layer three, I highlight the word welcome. I clicked on layer three. And what that does, it changes it to these settings over here on the side. So this will engrave at 316.7 millimeters per second at 35% power. It's set to output, no error assist, and it does show. Okay, now we've drawn a rectangle that has a cut line around the outside. So if we were to send this to the laser, we'd just cut a rectangle out and it would engrave the word welcome on whatever we put under the laser head. We're going to take this and we're going to learn one more skill real quick about how to create a frame using an offset. So we've selected the rectangle and we're going to use an offset tool. And we're going to use an outward offset with a corner, a regular corner. You could choose a round corner if you prefer that look. We're going to do a regular corner and it's at about a half an inch. So if we were to send this to the laser now, we would have a little frame cut out of wood and we'd have the word welcome engraved into the wood. All right, but we're gonna make this a multi-layer project. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hold control and hit D, which will just duplicate that object that I was selecting, the frame there. And then I'm gonna take the word welcome and I'm gonna put it right back here. And we're just gonna center that is what we're gonna do. We're gonna use our centering tools that we learned about a minute ago. All right, so now we've got the word welcome that is centered on this rectangle. Now I'm just going to take these and position them close together. All right, so if we were to take this in the end and we were sending this to the laser, what we would get is the word welcome engraved onto this back plate. And then we could take this frame that we cut out and we could glue it right to the front. And it would look something like that, but made out of wood or made out of acrylic or whatever material that you want. So it's just a simple two layer design with the word welcome engraved onto a sign. And I'm gonna right click the screen and I'm gonna choose preview. Preview is just gonna give us an idea. It'll do a few things. It'll tell us how long it's gonna to take to actually cut this job. So it'll take 18 minutes. And it also shows you the path that your laser will travel. So it shows you first thing it's going to do is going to cut out the frame, go down to the bottom, cut the back plate. Last thing it's going to do is, is engrave. And you can change that order. A lot of times it makes more sense to engrave and then cut just so if anything gets out of position, uh, your engraving doesn't get off. But that just gives you a general idea. 
of what it'll do. I'm gonna turn this show transversal moves off and it shows you what the what the what the item will look like. So again, just uh, very simply, we are able to take just a few skills, a trace skill, our layer tools skill, our shape making skill, and our offset skill, and just combine them to make a sign just that quick. Just learning a few skills can turn into an object that you can create. A little bit about saving and sending your project. So one thing you may wanna do is just make sure, of course you wanna do, is make sure that your project is the right size. So in this case, we have a little sign that's gonna be 13 and a half inches wide, uh, and the total width of both together, we can look at one total height, excuse me, is gonna be 5.66 inches. So once we're happy with that and everything is good, then what we wanna do is save our project. So you'll go File, and you'll go Save As, and then you'll choose somewhere that you wanna save it. So in this case, I'm gonna just throw it in here, uh, welcome sign welcome sign all right now it's saved now uh, to send it to the laser what you want to do of course is line up all your materials and then you'll want to go um, make sure everything is lined up and then you usually want to frame your job so framing your job is uh, you hit the frame button it'll send a signal over to your laser and the laser head will travel on the path that it will take to perform this job or at least on the outer perimeter so then you can adjust your material and make sure that it is all within that frame and that you don't have excess waste around the outside of your material once you're comfortable with that and you feel like everything is good then you can hit start and that will send your job over to the laser all right so that is it easy peasy 10 basic skills that you can combine to do a project in Lightburn. Uh, these are skills that you have got to know if you're on your way to mastering the software and you want to run that online e commerce business or you want to go to the craft fair and just kill it, or if you just want to have the best personalized Christmas presents uh, this year for Secret Santa. Um, if this video has helped you out, it will help me a ton if you could hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. I put out new content with tutorials like this periodically and uh, and hopefully it brought you some value. So thank you for joining.